represent Trump. So let me ask you this, because this is something I think is really important. We had Malcolm Nance on earlier, and it's been confirmed that Russia is definitely trying to uh, impact our elections. In oh, 2016, here um, yeah, here we go. Let's stick with some facts. Let's keep go. it real, let's, as you say. So in song. 2016, uh, Trump's campaign tactics mirrored that of the Russians. And the own, your, somebody from your own, uh, the Trump campaign said, they told a Bloomberg reporter in 2016 that they had three major voter suppression operations underway, including one aimed at depressing the black voter turnout. How concerned are you that Trump might be using you to carry out this voter suppression by making this feigned appeal to reach voters of color? And what exactly does that outreach look like? I'm in the community and I haven't really seen well, a lot of it. I happen to know a lot about voter suppression, Tiffany. I glad you, I'm Here glad you're in you Georgia, where Brian Kemp is a very active hey, proponent voter, of it, so voter I imagine suppression, so. Voter suppression is when people who look like me look at another side of the aisle and vote Republican or something that has nothing to do with the Democrat Party. Okay, and then Bruce, get come on. Now, you know, we know what I'm about, talking about no, when that, I say no, voter, no, no, voter no. suppression. That's voter suppression. You want to keep it real, my brother. Let's talk about real voter suppression. <laughs> you, Let's not do know. that. I'm talking about GOP-led voter suppression, and I can give you numerous examples if you like, but I'm giving you an opportunity to say how this president, who has his own campaign officials, have admitted that they have had a voter suppression operation to suppress black voters. U.S. Yeah, intelligence what, what agencies have confirmed that Russia is trying to stoke disinformation campaigns right here in America. You are here advocating on behalf of this president. Your response to voter suppression cannot truly be something that's partisan. Certainly, you are an advocate and proponent of democracy. Well, what do you have to say about this campaign I, potentially suppressing people who look like you in a state where I grew up in a state where you live now? Suppressing, I just went down the list and proved that suppressing that we had the lowest black unemployment in my lifetime. What does Tiffany. that have to do suppressing with voter that suppression? We, we funded our HBC. I, I don't get where this is going, but let's, let, but all seriousness, the Russians have no business in the Democrat Party, the Republican, Party, any of our republic. The Chinese, any of us, they have no business whatsoever. Agreed. Does your, does your record. president feel the same way, the, do you think? The, the reason why President Trump is going to win again is because of his record and where we are going in the future with this great nation. Now, I know that everyone's nervous because we're trending getting more black men vote on board that are following this president's great initiatives that we're going into 2020 and we're getting an all out assault with all these conspiracy theories. We've thrown Russia, we've thrown the voter suppression, we've thrown everything okay. we can on at the wall to make it stick. Yeah. But Tiffany, it won't well, work. All right. I think if you're fact averse, I, you probably believe that. But let me let me switch gears because something very serious, and that's 146,000 dead Americans. Donald Trump has said this virus is just going to disappear uh, in hot weather. He initially called it a hoax. Uh, his administration has gone out of their way to discredit Dr. Fauci. In fact, uh, Sinclair Broadcast Group, the very conservative group buying up a lot of local television stations, are set to air a conspiracy theory over the weekend that suggests Dr. Fauci invented the virus. Um, given that this kind of rhetoric is coming from your side of the aisle, and given that this virus disproportionately impacts people who look like you and me, how do you feel about the president's response, and, and what can he do better? Keeping in mind that a lot of people who have been impacted by this virus are watching right now. So I would just remind you to be sensitive about people who have lost family, um, who have, are the survivors of the 146,000 Americans. Americans who have died. Well, you know, I, I caution you to be sensitive on how you're delivering the message, Tiffany. Let's let's be fair across the board. Number one, we have 51 million. I'm just relaying uh, facts, sir. But please. Well, I'm I'm relaying facts too. We we've, we've tested 51 million people. There's 328 million American citizens in the United States. We're number one in the world in testing. We have a vaccine around the corner that's probably due around December. And number one, thank God the president shut down the country and save millions of lives on his leadership in January, or we would have a catastrophe. So, you know, I, I, I think that runs flat. I think we've done a great job. And the Fauci uh, uh, president, they, they, he just complimented him yesterday in the press conference. I know, they we haven't heard along. from him, though. He's, he's sidelined him. Shut down. We, we haven't people, really heard from him. His, his administration has been doing awful research on it. So that's kind of strange Fauci. that he's complimenting it, him while Peter Navarro is well, no, writing no, op-eds and, and you're saying not bad sit things here about him. Make like there's chaos going on between the uh, president and Dr. I'm Fauci going to sit here and Burks. report facts and try to get some straight talk from you. And you say.
say we're number one in the world, but let me just say, I hear you. Let me just say um, right now, the, right now, the U.S. has an uncontrolled outbreak. Um, we're reporting more than 50,000 new cases a day. Just give me some, uh, let me give you some context for comparison. Smaller countries like Germany and Japan are reporting hundreds of new cases a day. Again, we're reporting 50,000 new cases a day. You can't sit here and expect the American people to believe that you believe that this president has handled this virus well. Is there anything that you think Donald Trump could have done differently? And if so, what is that? I think he did. I think we've all, we as a as a country, have done a tremendous job. So you think 146,000 dead Americans we, was an appropriate we, response we from this? We as a country, we as a country, we, we as a country. We as a country, I, yes. But I'm asking about Donald we, Trump. And the president, the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, and we as the country, Tiffany, have done a marvelous job and a wonderful job combating this China virus. That has taken over our economy. So I just that, want to correct is, you. I don't know. <laughs> you you know. lead the diversity coalition, and you're you're calling, you're using uh, these racist terms like it, the China it virus. Came from this China. COVID nineteen. Yes. It came from China. Yes, but That's I. Where it came from. Yeah, but I would no sooner say that you from. had the MAGA virus than I would call this the China virus. No. That's ridiculous, well, and you I, know I that. And what, somebody leading a diversity back. coalition that's so, clearly offensive well, Jim, to the Asian well, American members of this community. Community, it seems like an easy thing to not do that Where as the, the head of the diversity coalition. Seems Where like an easy did thing. The virus come from? Where did the virus come from? China. What? I'm sorry? Where did the virus come from? Uh, look, I think MSNBC has a lot China. of people in rotation to host this show. When you get in rotation, you can ask the questions, but right now I'm asking them, and I'm saying well, a lot of people well, in the Asian American community, and myself included, find that term offensive. Why not call it COVID-19 what scientists call it? And that's really beside the point. I don't want to get sidetracked. The point is there are 146,000 dead Americans. This We are seeing 50,000 new cases a day, and you have gone on record by saying you think the president has done a good job, and you don't think there's anything different he can do. Um, so you think that's funny? I, I think you laugh I, at, well, I, you, to, laugh, you know, to keep you, from you crying, sir. Funny. I, I, well, I, I, I find it preposterous that we can't have a factual discussion, that we can't have an intellectual exchange. And I wonder, let me ask you, you has Donald, let me, because I'm curious. This is, this is my last question because we're running out of time. But I am curious because when I see folks like you um, support this president, has Donald Trump ever promised you anything financially in exchange for your blind support? Um, of this administration or helping his campaign. On the record, can you tell us if he's ever promised you anything financially or otherwise? No, and I've known him since 2015. I know what he has promised. He promised that he wanted to get the black unemployment low, get it down. He wanted to create jobs. He wanted to bring back and resurrect generational wealth in black communities where people like me who How's own that going? our own business. The black unemployment me, rate, as I mentioned, me, was 16.8 percent. So how's that going so you, far? I'm trying to answer the question. Sorry, please go ahead. He, want, he wanted to resurrect black generational wealth, create more jobs, more business, business owners like me, uh -huh. 30.6 million small businesses in the country. We represent 42 percent of the GDP. I just said earlier in the segment, we have the fastest rate of minority-owned businesses growing in this administration in the history of the United States. We own the retail commodities. We build the retail commodities. That's what the Opportunity Zones are for. That's why the Step 1 Act to get our black men I think back you mean out the, the with first their wives step to get back um, to their the families. First, yeah, the, the first so step back. We, you know, interesting we, thing, black women are actually uh, the number one uh, business owners when it comes to communities of color. What does his outreach to black women look like, or, or does that exist? Or does the Diversity Coalition have any outreach plans to I, the black communities uh, as it well, relates to black know, women? I, I think the president needs to keep doing what they're doing, and the records don't lie, and the numbers don't lie. And the numbers we're, don't we're, lie. 146,000 dead Americans had, and 16.8% unemployment rate among been, black people. Had we not been interrupted with the COVID-19 China virus, we would probably be at a 1.5% un low unemployment. We would have even right. more growth of black business. So um, listen, watch the third quarter GDP. We'll get out of this. We're going to be stronger. We're going to be better. We're going to see more and more people like me who own and build businesses. 
And what? it's going to be under this Trump administration. It okay. won't be under the Joe Biden administration, All that's right. for sure. Yeah. Well, Bruce, look, I will say I'm happy you came on. I think uh, what you said has certainly been telling for the American people and certainly for the voters watching you right now. So I do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much for joining me. Unfortunately, we're out of time.